Welcome to the Dead Sea. Just like the Sea of Galilee that I reviewed in a previous video, the Dead Sea is not technically a sea. It's a lake. Now, in this review, I'll cover a few facts and stats about the Dead Sea before we dig into the scriptures. It's called the Dead Sea because nothing can live in the water due to its salinity. The amount of salt in the water is 33% and is one of the world's saltiest bodies of water. But it's not the saltiest. Coming in at 43% salinity, Gayatala Pond, found in northeast Ethiopia, is the saltiest body of water in the world. The Dead Sea is nine and a half times as salty as the ocean, and due to this salt level and high mineral content, people cannot sink in the Dead Sea, they simply float. Now, I wasn't planning on getting in the water, but even though she was several thousand miles away at home, my wife convinced me to jump in, basically telling me if you're there, then just do it. So here I am in the Dead Sea. And yes, if I look uncomfortable, I am. I almost drowned twice when I was a kid, so I'm not the biggest fan of being in any type of water. The surface of the Dead Sea is 1,400 feet below sea level, making its shores the lowest naturally occurring place below sea level on Earth. It is approximately 1,000 feet deep, which makes it the deepest salty lake as well. Today, the Dead Sea has been shrinking because waters are evaporating faster than the Jordan River can replenish. Since the 1980s, it has lost 30% of its area. So what is the fate of this salty sea? Will it evaporate and never be seen again? Not according to the Word of God. The Dead Sea is mentioned 16 times in the Bible, primarily to describe the eastern borders of the Promised Land. In some translations, it's referred to as the Salt Sea in Genesis 14.3 and the Eastern Sea in Ezekiel 47.18. In Deuteronomy 3.17, it's called the Sea of Araba. The two exceptions I found that were not talking about land boundaries are found in Ezekiel and Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 14, verses 8 and 9. On that day, living water will flow out from Jerusalem, half of it east to the Dead Sea and half of it west to the Mediterranean Sea, in summer and in winter. The Lord will be king over the whole earth. On that day, there will be one Lord and his name, the only name. And in Ezekiel chapter 47, verses 1 and verses 8 and 9 says, The man brought me back to the entrance to the temple, and I saw water coming out from under the threshold of the temple toward the east. He said to me, This water flows toward the eastern region and goes down into the Arba, where it enters the Dead Sea. When it empties into the sea, the salty water there becomes fresh. Swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. There will be large numbers of fish because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everything will live. Both passages are set during the future post-tribulation world where it describes a river flowing from the new temple in Jerusalem into the Dead Sea and specifically in Ezekiel, turning it from a salty sea into fresh water. Now, should we really be surprised? God has always been in the business of restoration, of making dead things come to life. It's not hard to see this future event as a physical example of what Jesus already does for us today spiritually when we accept him as Savior. Remember what Jesus told the woman at the well in John chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. But Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5, But because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. So during the millennial reign of Christ, the Dead Sea will become alive by the power of God. What a wonderful and amazing moment it will be to witness this for all of us who are followers of Jesus. This concludes my short review of the Dead Sea. In my next review, we will continue this theme on how God provides life even when surrounded by death as I take you to the oasis in the middle of the desert in Gedi. This is one of, if not, my favorite place I visited in all of Israel. But until then, thank you for watching. And if you're new to the channel, please pound on that subscribe button to stay up to date on any new videos. And also check out my most popular video where I review the Sea of Galilee and check out my review of the tragic history of Masada. God bless everyone.